Good evening, all. It's Jim here at Tutor Deer. Welcome to the fifth in our series of live revision sessions for uh, learners who are taking BTEC National Business Unit 3 with the next exam as we record coming up in January 2024. Lots of people joining us live, but we know that many hundreds watch these sessions on catch-up. So if that's you, uh, welcome to. Uh, we've already covered quite a few parts of business finance so far. We've covered sources of finance, break-even, uh, cash flow forecasting. And last week, we looked at the first in three sessions on ratios when we looked at the profitability ratios. Tonight, we're staying with ratios and we're focusing on liquidity. So 20, 25 minutes or so of quick fire revision activities, including a short case study at the end. And of course, if you're watching on catch up, do take the time to pause the video, give yourself a bit more time to have a think about the uh, the answers. And also, we have got a couple of calculations to do during this session. Let's get straight over to what you need to know for liquidity. In each of these sessions for business finance, we're going through firstly exactly what, you, what it is you need to know, but also how these topics are often examined. And uh, let's get rid of that uh, clock on the screen there, shall we? <laughs> we'll have that later. So for F4, part of the business finance part of the Unit 3 specifications, uh, liquidity is quite a short se section, really. It just requires you to be able to calculate, interpret, analyze and evaluate two ratios, the current ratio and the liquid capital ratio. So only two ratios to be concerned about, but we do need to know about both of them. And the reason for that is it's a commonly examined topic area. So as we'll see, let's go to the uh, recent questions. One or two of these are very recent. I think the first one there was last May's exam paper, May 23, calculate the liquid capital ratio. So three marks going for correctly calculating that. And I've just highlighted in red, where the words liquidity and or ratio were mentioned in previous Unit 3 exam questions. As you can see, they feature 
with a variety of, of mark allocations. But also, I've also included a, included a couple of questions that actually are really about liquidity and therefore liquidity ratios. For example, uh, look at the bottom one there, discuss why businesses like to the max need to manage their net current assets and liabilities. That's really about managing um, liquidity. So can be examined, often is examined. Uh, it's unusual for it not to feature in a unit three paper. So we need to be on top of our margins. Uh, so ratios, not margins. So let's dive into some multiple choice questions. Now, of course, in unit three, there are no multiple choice questions. But as we've said in previous sessions, this is a good way of quickly testing knowledge and understanding of uh, formulae and concepts. So uh, we'll give you about sort of 15, 20 seconds or so to, uh, to, if you wish to, you don't have to, in the live chat to put your answers into the live chat window. And then I'll go through the answers. Here's our first one. What is the formula for the current ratio? Oh, Lionel straight in there. First, the first response of the night. So thank you for that. And uh, I believe it's the correct answer as well. So even better. Here we've got, uh, don't forget, there are lots of different formula, formulae that you need to know for Unit 3. So in these sessions, we are practicing them. And we'll keep going on about the need to know your formula. It's really important. Lots of easy marks to be had. Most people going for B in the live chat, I'd say 100% of people going for B. Let's have a look. It is indeed B. Yeah, so the formula for the current ratio, one of our two liquidity ratios is current assets divided by current liabilities. And don't forget, we'd find current assets and current liabilities. They're totals on the statement of financial position, otherwise known as the balance sheet. Okay, question two. Well, we've done one ratio. What about the other? What is the formula for the liquid capital ratio? So again, four formulae uh, on the screen now. All indeed of those four are formulae listed on the Unit 3 specification, but only one of them is the formula for the liquid capital ratio. And uh, with all of these multiple choice questions, the answer is either A, B, C, or D. Looks like Mags was first in tonight, so well done for having a go. As I say, if you watch your own replay, we know that hundreds and hundreds of uh, students catch up on these sessions once, they've, once the live session's ended. So do pause the video if you want to have a bit more time. Most people are going for D, Graham says. Is it D? Question mark. Let's have a look, shall we? It is indeed D, yeah. So it's current assets, but we take something out of current assets, don't we? We exclude or take away inventory from current assets, but we still divide it by current liabilities. Okay, here's our next. So we've talked about the current ratio. If we were looking at a statement of financial position, which two of the four listed there would be included when we're calculating the current ratio. So we know that the current ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. The question is, two out of those four would therefore be included in our calculations, our numbers for the current ratio. So which two? So we're looking for two letters this time. Two of those would be included in the current ratio. And remember that the ratio is current assets divided by current liabilities. What do we think? Harder question, this one. A few more seconds, maybe. Okay. Uh, I think Mags was the first person to get the correct answer in the live chat. Let's have a look. It is indeed A and D. Uh, as Mags said, a process of elimination. Well, we know there are two right answers. We know it can't be a long-term bank loan because that would be a long-term non-current liability. So that wouldn't be in current liabilities. And similarly, non-current assets, tangible non-current assets. And we'll look at this when we look at the statement of financial position, such as land and buildings, that kind of stuff, uh, plant and equipment, motor vehicles. They're not current assets. Therefore, the other two are. Accruals is a current liability. And accrual, as, and I won't spoil the fun for the accruals and prepayment session, but accruals are basically a, an allowance for costs that have been incurred that we need to pay. And similarly, prepayments are current assets. We won't say any more about those until we have a whole session on accruals and prepayments. Not to be missed. Here's our next one. Why then are inventories excluded from current assets when calculating the liquid capital ratio? So we've already found out that the liquid capital ratio takes current assets, but says forget all about inventories, get rid of them, remove them, exclude them. Why do we do that? Is it because they're too hard to count? Is it because you can't turn inventories into cash? Is it because inventories take longer to turn into cash? Or could it be that D, most businesses just don't have 
inventory. So one of those is the reason why. What do we think? And it is only one of them. There might be a grain of truth in one or two others, but <laughs> one of them is the correct answer. A few more seconds, let's see if we can get the first correct answer in the live chat. Of course, you don't have to put your answer in the live chat, but it helps me just to get a feel for how you're getting on with these questions. What do we think? It's a hard question, that, but it's goes, it goes to the heart of what the liquid capital ratio is all about. Let's take a look, shall we, at the correct answer. We've got some answers coming in. Good to see. It is indeed C. The reason why we don't include inventories in current assets or we take it away from the total of current assets uh, is because inventories typically, not always, but typically take longer to turn into cash. There's less ability to turn those into cash. And really, that's what liquidity is all about. It's the ability of the business to pay now the bills that it owes. Has he got the cash or other assets he can quickly turn into cash to pay what it owes? That's the idea of liquidity. So it is indeed C. Okay, now uh, building on this, let's just develop our understanding. Before we do a calculation, some quick fire true false questions here. This really tests our knowledge and understanding of the concepts behind these two liquidity ratios. So here's our first one, and you've got a 50% chance, haven't you, here? Um, but have a think about it. The current ratio will increase when trade receivables are settled and converted into cash balances. So does the current ratio increase when our trade receivables, amounts owed by customers, get settled and converted into cash? What do we think? Just in the live chat, if you're with me, put either T or F, or true or false. And if uh, you're struggling to think about whether it would or not, think about what the formula is, what goes into current assets. Max is saying true, but not fully confident on this one. That's fine. That's why we're doing this session. Let's have a look. Uh, Lionel and Graham and others are all saying true. Let's have a look. It is uh, false. It won't, will it? Because trade receivables and cash balances are both in current assets. So if trade receivables of, say, £5,000 is paid, is settled by customers, well, trade receivables goes down by five, cash goes up by five. So there's no effect on current assets. Therefore, there's no effect on the current ratio. So that's a false. Let's try again. Will the liquid capital ratio be lower than the current ratio for a business that has inventories? So again, think about the formula of the two. Will the liquid capital ratio be lower than the current ratio. What do we think? Think about what happens to calculate that liquid capital ratio. And then for a business that has inventories, <laughs> and then the answer should be straightforward, really. The only saying true, and a few other people are saying true. Shall we have a look? Why don't we? <laughs> It is indeed true, it is, isn't it? Because if you think about it, the current ratio is current assets, which is on the top, divided by current liabilities. Now, what changes with the liquid capital ratio where the top bit loses something, doesn't it? In this case, it loses inventories, but the bottom bit stays the same. So the, the liquid capital ratio will be lower. And of course, it should be lower because the idea is the liquid capital ratio is a more stringent test of an ability of the business to create cash. So you would expect, and in fact, you don't, well, it will be, <laughs> it will be lower than the current ratio because we've reduced the top part of the ratio. We've taken out inventory and said, ignore them. We can't turn those into cash or we may not be able to turn them into cash. So it will indeed always be lower. Okay, what about this one? Now, here's a situation. A business uses its cash balances to pay or repay a long-term bank loan. Will that lower the current ratio? So again, think about these ideas of what's in the current ratio, current assets at the top, current liabilities on the bottom. What happens if we use our cash to repay a bank loan, a long-term bank loan? Will that lower the current ratio? Is that true or false? Mag's doing some very efficient uh, changing in his answers on the previous one. I got it right, of course. So we're using cash which is current assets, and we spend some of that to repay a long-term bank loan. Does that lower the current ratio? A few 
few more seconds. What do we think? Lionel's first team with true. Well, one or two people saying true, one or two people saying false. So 50 50. <laughs> indeed, the answer is indeed true. It is true. Um, if you use your cash up to repay long term liabilities like a long term bank loan, it means you've got less cash, but your current liabilities are still the same because they're not affected. So actually, not such a good idea sometimes, particularly if a business has liquidity problems. Don't use your cash up paying long-term liabilities. Try to conserve your cash. So it will indeed lower the current ratio. Don't forget the current ratio, current assets on the top, current liabilities on the bottom. Now, does a high and rising current ratio indicate a business is experiencing liquidity problems? What do we think? Max, going back to that last one, uh, the we're losing current assets, we're, we're spending our cash, but our current liabilities are not being settled. So that's the reason why the current ratio falls. Now, these aren't meant to be easy, but these test knowledge and understanding and application of the two ratios. And by doing this, it makes it easier to use them and apply them in the unit three exam. So does a high and rising current ratio indicate the business is experiencing liquidity problems? What would you think if you saw a business with a high and rising current ratio? A few more seconds. Let's take a look at the answer. Well done for having a go in the live chat, everyone. It's false, isn't it? In fact, it's the opposite, isn't it? A business that's got a high and rising current ratio, that would suggest its liquidity problems are getting better. Let's, let's, let's go to a few liquidity problems because it must mean that its current assets are growing more than its current liabilities. In other words, maybe it's got more cash, more receivables or less current liabilities. So normally a high and rising current ratio isn't a, isn't a symptom of liquidity problems. If anything, a business has got too much cash. Maybe you should spend it on something. And last one, is the ideal current ratio for any business 2.0, true or false? If somebody came along to you, in fact, one or two of the textbooks say things like this. The ideal current ratio for a business is 2.0. Is that true or false? The ideal current ratio. Hmm. Is there such a thing as an ideal current ratio? Could be, couldn't there? Well, it must be because the textbooks say there is. But Graham and others are straight in there saying false. And it is indeed false. It's complete nonsense. Now, one of the reasons the textbooks say it is because they're written by people who have no understanding whatsoever about running a business or about liquidity. But it depends, doesn't it? 2.0 might be very good for a business. It might not be enough. It might be um, too high. It all depends on the situation. All depends on the situation. So if current assets are twice the current liabilities, Okay, it just means you've got enough current assets to pay your current liabilities. In fact, you've got twice as many. But is that good or bad? Is it ideal? It all depends. Tesco, for example, has a current ratio of about 0.4 to 1. Why? Why is it so low? Because it owes lots of money to suppliers who need to supply it, and it has uh, it generates lots of cash, and it doesn't need. It doesn't need to have a high current ratio. Excellent. Right, we are 15 minutes in. We've got 10 minutes left. So we're going to do two things. Firstly, we're going to do a quick calculation and we'll take our time with this and then we'll finish off with a mini case study applying our understanding of liquidity ratios. So here's our first one. We've got some information on the screen there. The table shows extracts from the statement of financial position, the soft of a balance of a business, the balance sheet, the statement of financial position. And we've just got extracts there, not the whole thing. We've got current liabilities, inventories, Cash balances, trade receivables. Now, all the information you need on there is ready for you to calculate. Two ratios, please. The current ratio, if you remember back to our formula earlier, and the liquid capital ratio. So what really the starting point for this is to work out which of those four are the bottom part of the ratios, which are the top, then have a go. And if you could do the ratios maybe to two decimal places. I'll accept one, but two decimal places. Let's put, uh, what should we put two minutes on the uh, two minutes on the clock. Of course, if you watch you on replay, you can have as long as you like. And uh, I'll mute myself whilst you have a go. If you want to have a go, put your answers into the live chat.
looks like we've got some right answers already for the current ratio with uh, oh, 25, 30 seconds left. So have a go at the liquid capital ratio as well if you want to. There we go. Our time is up. Two minutes now. Don't forget, yeah, typically uh, you would be working on the basis of a mark a minute. So typically you might be looking at uh, four, five, six marks for those two. So you're working very quickly and very accurately. We got some correct answers in to the live chat for both the current ratio and the liquid capital ratio, which is phenomenal. Should we just have a look at what the workings were? Don't forget, you can express these in different ways. You can either express them as a ratio to one or, or the number. I think both are fine, really. Here's our first one. In fact, lots of people, I think Leonel was the first in the live chat with the correct answer, along with a number of others. 3.29. Well, how do we get to 3.29? What that means is current assets are 3.29 times um, current liabilities. Well, to get to current assets, we had to add three numbers together. We had to add together inventories, 45,000, cash balances, 38, trade receivables of 75, and then uh, that's our top part of the ratio. We needed to find current liabilities. Well, there it was, 48,000 at the top of the table. Divide the total of those three divided by 48 is indeed 3.29. Now, we said, didn't we, that the liquid capital ratio is a more stringent test. It's meant to say, well, what happens if we can't turn inventories into cash? Are we still able to pay our way? So we just basically exclude inventories. All we do is we just add together. Uh, well, there's two ways of doing it. Either take your current assets total and take inventories away or ignore the inventories and just add together the uh, the cash balances and the trade receivables. If you're looking at it, it comes to about 113,000, I think. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, and again, we're still dividing by the same thing, aren't we? Dividing by current liabilities. So that gets us to 2.35 or 2.35 to 1. Another way of expressing the ratios. And now what do these mean? Well, the business is able to pay its way, isn't it? The current ratio says that for every one pound of current liabilities, it's got three pounds 29 of current assets that it could use in theory to pay its pay what it owes. So it looks quite healthy. And even if we take the inventories of 45,000 out of the equation, it's still able, it still looks able to be able to pay what it owes particularly if it can turn some of those trade receivables into cash. So that's what we're talking about with the liquidity ratios. It's, it's can, does the business have enough current assets to be able to pay what it's going to be needing to pay soon, which are the current liabilities? And with that in mind, should we just finish with a short case study? Let's take a look at a mini situation. And I'm going to ask for your thoughts on a couple of things a business could do when it comes to managing its liquidity. Here's our mini case study. Uh, Ariana. She runs a, a toy shop, a profitable toy shop called One Last Toy. Now, during the quieter summer months, demand for toys falls. But unfortunately, the shop is still packed with unsold toys that she added to inventory last Christmas. So Ariana's bank have indicated they'd like to see an improvement in One Last Toy's liquidity because the business has a large and rising overdraft. So there's our situation. Um, a toy shop, it's profitable, but the problem is it's got too much of inventory that was meant to be sold last Christmas on the shelves, maybe in the warehouse. The bank said, Ariana, we need to see an improvement in your liquidity ratios, please. So over to you. Maybe just, uh, we'll give you a minute for maybe just to type maybe one or even two ways in which Ariana could improve a liquidity ratio of one last toy. Over to you. Let's, uh, let's stick a minute on the screen here and off we go.
There we go. That's a minute gone. Goes very quickly, doesn't it? So what do we think? Ideas. What could Ariana do? The, ba the, the bank said, we need you to improve your liquidity. You've got an overdraft. It's large. It's getting larger. So what could she do? Well, really, this is, goes to the heart of applying the concepts of um, liquidity. Now, we've got some answers coming in, actually. I'm going to pick a couple out here and just put them on the screen because these look amazing. Hang on, let's have a look. Let's put uh, maybe we, let's put uh, Leonie's on there. So there we go. So Leonie said, run a sale or promotion to sell older stock. Perfect. Exactly right. We're told, aren't we, that uh, one last toy, Ariana's Toy Shop, has got lots of unsold inventory. In other words, if we were to apply the liquid capital ratio to this business, we'd be saying, well, yeah, you've got a problem here. You've got far too much money, cash tied up in inventories. So if you could sell those inventories, perhaps by running a special promotion, perhaps by discounting some of those toys, ideally you'd turn the inventory into cash, into cash sales. And even better, if you can sell them for more than they cost, you might make a bit of profit, which would actually also improve the current ratio. So superb. What else could you do? Let's stick uh, Leonel's answer in here. Love this one. Decrease the price of the toys, which I suppose in a way is basically very similar, run a sale uh, or a promotion, but actually it's using toys. So but the word toys gives you application. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Get In other words, turn your excess inventory into cash. Really important. Love those. Well done for those. Let's have a look at what I went with. I was thinking about the two liquidity ratios here because I think what I'd want to do is I'd want to explain something that she could do and how and why that would improve a liquidity ratio and make the bank happier. So uh, I went with uh, Leonie's idea, which is to run a, a promotional sale. So exactly as was shown on the previous contribution there, by selling older inventory at a discounted price, which uh, Lionel was also suggest suggesting, Ariana can lower the value of inventories by turning them into cash. Now. Does that improve the current ratio? Well, it might do. Depends how much profit you make on them. But it, if you've got lower inventories, that means that the liquid capital ratio isn't going to be reduced as much by those inventories, is it? So in the liquid capital ratio will have more cash, less inventories. Therefore, that should improve. And uh, I also suggested that she might speak to the bank manager, to the bank, and try to convert the bank overdraft into a bank loan. Now, why might that improve? A liquidity ratio. Well, don't forget, a bank overdraft is one of the three things that you typically find in current liabilities, isn't it? It's trade, trade payables, bank overdraft, and accruals are the three main items in current liabilities. If we can convert the bank overdraft into a longer-term bank loan, it removes it from the bottom bit of the ratio, doesn't it? Both ratios, acid test and current ratio. In other words, we have lower current liabilities. And of course, Non-current liabilities go up, but the point is that will increase and improve the current ratio and the liquid capital ratio. So maybe a discussion with the bank. Now, of course, that would they do that? Well, possibly because we're told that Ariana's toy shop is profitable. Therefore, in theory, the bank will maybe look kindly on maybe converting the overdraft into a loan, switching it from current liabilities into non-current liabilities, the effect of which will be to improve, increase both liquidity ratios. There we go. We have spent almost exactly 30 minutes there having a look at uh, these two liquidity ratios, the current ratio and the liquid capital ratio. Done some calculations, done some questions, a little bit of a case to do there. Obviously, we're going to come back to these ratios as we get closer to unit three when we do some exam style practice live online. But anyway, hopefully you found that session useful. If you have, please give it a like, whether you're watching live or on demand. Next week, we're doing the third in our series of ratio sessions. We're looking at measuring efficiency. Uh, I won't spoil the fun. Join me next Monday at six o'clock, if you can, for the next live stream for Unit 3. But for now, see you later.